Hey, Shane. No. Hey. It's not, it's not st Stranger, though, right? It's Stanger. Yeah, you got close. Stanger. Okay. Gosh, my apologies for that. We will fix that right now. No, no, we, we uh, had it right all along. It's just. Well, there you go. I just can't read. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no uh, Shane, How are you guys? Good, yeah. doing good. Thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, your film, Good Bad Things. Am I correct? It was at the Slam Dance Festival. Yeah, yeah, we were at Slam Dance this uh, most recent January. Congratulations for Thank that. You. And it's getting a release in AMC theaters, like fifty screens. Is that right? Yeah. So we released tomorrow, which is pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, we're doing uh, we're doing. 50 theaters uh, we're doing a thursday release and then a follow-up matinee sunday and then running all the way um through the week at burbank so yeah it's, well, uh, it's cool it's good to see the amc chain support small indie films um i saw your film it's it's very heart-wrenching it's also funny it's a romance uh, a young disabled man just as a goof so i'm just gonna put my name into this you know this dating app and he, he finds a girl very attractive, thinks he's being catfished. He's, he's not. They develop a relationship. And I will say, I was very moved by the film. It reminds me of a movie I saw when I was younger. I love this movie, Inside Moves, directed by Richard Donner, which okay. is another film um, that features disabled characters. I think the problem is with disabled, when you tell a disabled story, Hollywood always wants to cast, you know, Tom Hanks or mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. The lead actor in your film is disabled. Mm -hmm. So tell us, how did you pull this together? This story, it, it, it's 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 more realistic. And I'm going to share your uh, website. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Hollywood. So Dan yeah, yeah. So Danny and me grew up together. I've been friends with him since I was like uh, 12 years old, and so. I went to film school kind of as a second career um, just a couple of years ago. And, and in the middle of school, I was doing a short film and I just kind of talked to Danny. I'm like, hey, I don't really know what I want to to do my short film on. And I think he was kind of just like, oh, I'll be in it. And so that's kind of how it started. But we did a short film and uh, the people in class when we were kind of looking at the dailies and everything uh, just really felt drawn to him as a as, you know, just an on screen presence. And so. I told him and, you know, we kind of started riffing a little bit, but um, yeah, we just kind of were like, you know what, fuck it. Let's go, let's go do, do it the real way. And we wrote a, sc a script together, pulled 25 years of memories and just kind of just went off and did it, you know, super indie style. Weren't expecting a whole lot. It was, you know, for me, it was my first feature for him. It was sort of his first foray into, into acting. And so we went in very much um, just sort of with the plan of, go to make a movie and have some fun. And I think what happened was people started really responding to the script. And when we started shooting, it just started, it really was feeling like people um, were getting behind the project in a bigger way. And, you know, we brought in a little bit more money and, you know, maxed out a couple more credit cards as, you know, as such as you do when you're making your first movie. But uh, yeah, we just kind of did everything we could to keep it, to keep it rolling. And it started off, I think, feeling very much kind of like a student project, but Along the way, we brought some really talented people onto the team, and yeah, it just it just started flowing. And so we, you know, we worked our asses off um, for a couple of years, and uh, it feels really great to finally be able to get it out there. So thank you. Yeah, well, Danny is very good in the film. He's very good. Um, I, I found um, one of the more touching scenes was his relationship with his father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that really hit me as a dad myself, um, the actor who played his dad, is that who was it? Is, was that his dad? It looks exactly like his dad. Right. But yeah. no. <laughs> so, um, so that's Gail Hansen. He, um, he hadn't been in, you know, I don't think he'd acted in the film for quite a while because he was a big actor when he was, you know, in his twenties, thirties, and then ended up becoming a studio executive for, I uh, think like a good, you know, couple, you know, decades, I think like, you know, 5, 10, 15 years as a studio executive, but I met him um, years ago and we just stayed in touch as friends. And so uh, when, when I started, <clears throat> excuse me, when I went to film school, um, he had by then started teaching acting. And so I kind of started taking lessons with Gail and then 
along the way, I had Danny go work with Gail uh, once we started, you know, kind of working on the script together. And along the way, we wrote a, we wrote the story after Danny had started prepping just to kind of learn the learn the um, uh, kind of fundamentals uh, as an actor. And and we decided that we needed to make sure that him and Gail could have a scene together. And so we put Gail in the scene to play his dad. Uh, and so they got a really strong chance to connect and practice and rehearse. And just by the time we got to shooting them together, it was just, I mean, it, they were basically, you know, already so tight. So that really worked for us. But Gail's amazing. He's such a talented, um, caring guy. And uh, we're really lucky he was part of the project because he brought it, I think, to another level for sure. Uh, we've got over 2,600 people watching live. We've got questions from our chat. We'll have more questions in, in a second. We'll go to those. I wonder if we can watch the trailer. Yeah. Can we yeah. do that right now? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause this, I saw this trailer in a theater. Oh, and no. That's what what we, I, I saw it. I forgot what I saw. I saw, I th uh, saw the, um, what was it? The duel in theater. Oh, okay. This played in front of it. So I go to AMC Burbank and um, okay, they play yeah, the trailer. Yeah. That's where we're going to also have, I don't know if you go to the 16 or eight or both, but we're doing, I go to the 16. Okay. So at the eight, that's where we're doing our week long uh, theatrical, but okay. I'm happy to hear you saw the trailer because we didn't pay for trailers. And so part of the deal for not paying is they don't tell us actually when we're going to get them run and which films were approved on. So we kind of like have no idea. Like I only know when they play, if someone's like, Hey, I saw your trailer. So you're like, <laughs> you're, well, let's, you're, yeah. Let's anyway. check it out right now. Here it is. There we go. I think I just got my first match. Maddie. I love that. There's no way she's real. Definitely a spam account. She can have me like follow her, get my credit card information, steal my identity. It's worth it. I kind of didn't tell her about my disability. Just tell her. She's not going to care. I mean, if she cares, then forget about her. Love is the best part of life. All we can do is take the leap. goodbadthings.com is the website you can get more info you can see the trailer let's go to questions from our chat here we've got a dallas 24 when casting romantic partners on an indie what are the primary traits things you're looking for initially is there a is there time for chemistry reads during the casting process i mean it, i think it depends on the film for this for this particular film we didn't really have a whole lot of runway i guess just in terms of what we were i think able to do just because it's my first film and danny had never acted before and we were pretty low budget so we could have gone that direction and, and gone through a casting process but we went directly to um, a talent agency and and sort of looked through i think the roster of of um people we thought were going to be a good fit and so when we landed on uh jessica she was really like one of my favorite actresses in the show Black Sails. I don't know if you guys saw that show, but uh, but so she, you know, she had a role that already sort of it required her to have chemistry with a lot of different people through, you know, the few seasons. And so I kind of had this idea. I'm like, you know what, if she was able to pull off some of the stuff she pulled off on that show, um, this is going to be no problem. And so when I first met her, she told me that she was a big fan of Shane Burka and uh, his wife, Hannah, and they have a big following. Um, and they're, they're a couple, he has a disability um, and Hannah's able-bodied and, and they have a relationship that very much, I think mirrors, you know, some of the things about ours. And so the fact that she was already, you know, a fan of his and was, was talking about him and kind of just, I don't know, I felt like she really believed in the material. And that was, I think the most important thing is just to know that she 
wanted to portray this correctly. And so, yeah, it was, it was, um, that's how we did it. But hopefully in the future, I'm allowed to do some more like auditions and stuff, but I don't get that yet. So, <laughs> well, what I, first of all, by the way, the comments are wow, that looks great, John Harrison. And then Sassy77, who is cutting onions? So I, I like that comment. But uh, she cut what, onions for the for one of the scenes because yeah, we only had like 10 people in our crew. But uh but, that's not but, but uh the way that uh disabled uh characters and films have always been portrayed is by celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. I like when it's real, like in the movie Inside Moves, mm -hmm. directed by Richard Donner is so authentic so uh just well done so um kudos to you for that um Thanks. your comment here dapper bard games i'm disabled and i'm so happy a movie like this exists come yeah. check it out over the weekend um we're in pretty much we're in most major cities at some place so thursday or sunday um yeah i'd love to love to see what you think patrick lear says congrats 50 theaters Thanks, and question dude. here, uh, Jimmy Francis, what budget and amount of shooting days did you manage to get? Um, it was it was sort of uh, it's spread out between like all sorts of different ways we pulled it together. But I'd say the budget, you know, kind of by the time we finished, went through all the festivals, got all the music licensing, all that stuff. It's under a million. Um, and we shot it over over about 20 two to 24 days. But what happened was uh, we ended up having to sort of adjust because someone got COVID and we had a push. And so like we were, we were, we were shooting it in a way where um, we were doing four day weeks, a lot of the time, sometimes two day weeks, sometimes three day weeks. So because we didn't have a lot of money and when I say under a million, I'm like, well under a million, but I've just been told <laughs> I'm not supposed to say the number, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, we were making it with friends and, and, you know, by the time we were, you know, a few weeks in, um, we, we all just kind of believe in the film in a, in a way that I think allowed us to take the pressure off of like having to fit into a specific, like standard schedule because, you know, we really only had to answer to ourselves. And so we took time. We, we really made sure that we gave ourselves enough time and we were, you know, writing a lot of the times on the weekends and adjusting things, adding scenes. Um, so it was, it was really lucky, uh, I guess, first kind of creative uh process to be able to do it that way a question from davina duckworth um how did you and uh, danny uh set out the scope of the screenplay the length the budget uh so we started with okay what do we what do we have access to we've got my house we've got his house we've got so it was kind of like okay let's let's go for high production value because we don't have a lot of money and so um anything that we could think to do that could sort of give us that feeling like it wasn't just, you know, some low budget uh, student film we we did. And so we really utilized his house. Um, it's one of the main locations and uh, that that really lended itself to like, you know, probably a quarter of the movie. And yeah, it was it was just all it was just all sort of what do we think we can what do you what kind of movie can we make where we don't you know have to sacrifice or give away? I guess that it's it's a low budget project. But um, I don't know if that's an answer, but is it? Uh, Good answer. And yeah. uh, last question here from Oliver Leveret Frog. Can you watch it outside the U.S.? It's opening in theaters this weekend in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. When will there be a, a for, for an uh, a, you know, overseas rollout? Yeah, so we're going to have um, within, I think within the next like four to six weeks, we're going to be able to... Um, show it outside of the country. I don't, I'm not able to announce it quite yet, but if you follow our Instagram account at good, bad things film, we're going to keep everyone updated, but there's going to be a chance. Um, yeah. In about four to six weeks, I think maybe seven, I don't know, somewhere in there. Well, I would follow the website. Uh, then the website is again, uh, it's goodbadthings.com. Goodbadthings.com. Go to goodbadthings.com and uh, follow Shane's work. So it's like yeah. you have a, a Q&A screening on Sunday? Is that? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing we're doing a... So last night was our premiere, which was really cool. And Rami Youssef uh, came out and he hosted the Q&A. And 
Yeah, it was, it was rad. And then um, on, no, to, wait, I'm confused. Yeah, tomorrow we're doing another Q&A uh, screening at Century City AMC. Um, and Sean Hader from the film Coda, she's hosting it and going to do that whole thing and like moderate the Q&A. And then we're doing one more Q&A Sunday. Um, yeah, I think, are you, are you going to Tustin? Is that the one? Um, no, oh, actually, no, Danny's going to that one in Tustin. Oh, okay. and then Century City oh, is going to be, yeah, yeah, we're splitting up on Sunday after. After uh, kind of sticking together this whole time. Yeah. Here it is. Goodbadthings.com. And Rock and Art says, if there's no boobs in a movie, Chris will drop points on the review scale. I'll say this. It, the movie's sexy. It has sex. I like that you leaned right into, because uh, the romantic lead is a photographer. Uh, there are some sexy scenes in this. I'm letting you know right now. So... <laughs> I'm serious. And Patrick Lemire, strong award this contender. I'm not sure if you're aware of our award show, award this, but you are eligible for the show uh, this December. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not fully, fully aware, um, but I, you know, into that. So whatever. it's okay. It's okay. You know, we'll hey, look it. at this movie looks good. Red French moon. Uh, I will try to see this film ideally with the date Dapper Bard games. Dapper Bard Games, you see this game, this see this movie with the date? Look, you're going to get some. This I'm just telling you right now. It's very <laughs> romantic. I'm serious. I'm being wow, serious. And the whole, there, yeah. whole cast is really, really, like, um, delightful. And it works. So congrats again, Shane, on Thanks. this. Yeah, no, you know, look, there's a dearth of these films. Just give me a simple romance. People have problems. They may get together. They may not. Will they? Won't they? Get all of that. All of that in a very authentic story. So there you go. Uh, Shane, thank you so much. Yeah, for thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate right. you. Congrats on the film. See it this weekend. Goodbadthings.com. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye.